Caddis Maximus here, this time with a overview and discussion of hole saws and self-feed bits. These are large hole making tools. The self-feed bits, and I'll just quickly get over these first, these are for large hole making in wood. It can be used in plastics, but they cannot absolutely cannot be used in metal. Self-feed bits, such as this Milwaukee Switchblade, which is a bit of a more modern design, as this one has a high-speed steel interchangeable cutter. And it is an interesting design. As we can see with self-feed bits, such as this one with the interchangeable cutter, or ones with a uh, standard integrated cutter, if my camera would focus here, for some reason it's having a really hard time. I don't know exactly why. These cutters actually aren't cutters. They're known as chip lifters because these little cutting edges here are actually higher by about a sixteenth of an inch from this. And these cut around the edge and then this just basically lifts out the center of the wood. These are the most effective and the longest lasting for drilling holes in wood just because of how heavy duty the bit is, the way it can be repeatedly resharpened. And on this one, you can just easily replace the cutter. One little criticism about the uh, Milwaukee switchblades is many times these will jam. And when you do get into heavy reversing operations, there's been a few posts about this uh, cutting blade kind of getting caught and either breaking or getting bent. It hasn't been too many, but I uh, it has happened. It's an interesting idea of just having the ability to switch that out. But myself, personally, I prefer to use the more traditional self-feed bits. These are off people uh, do comment that these are plumber's bits, but there's no nothing that limits you to using these for plumbing. Anytime you want to make large holes in wood and you need to make a lot of them, you're going to be much better off with the self-feed bit. They are quite a bit more expensive. They require more powerful tools to drive them because you are driving a larger cutting area. But man, they last a huge amount of time. And then there are the infamous self-feed bits. When they get really large, they'll actually have two chip lifters and they'll even be uh, have interleaving notches such as this Lennox. Those two were Milwaukee's, of course. This is a 4 and 5 8 self-feed bit. This would be used by plumbers for lavatory or toilet drains. These are always notorious for really just requiring huge drills, lots of power. However, like the newest brushless corded or cordless drills have been shown that they can drive this these types of cutters, specifically the 4 and 5 8 self-feed bit, through softer materials like Douglas fir. They don't like it very much, but it is an interesting aspect of just how far cordless drills have come. So anyway, these are this is you know a really big cutter on the shelf. I think this thing's around $65 or something, so much more expensive than a hole saw but really is meant to go the distance. Now let's get into hole saws. We'll talk about sheet metal hole saws. We have an old, an older version here and a slightly newer greenly with a carbide tips. These are known as electrician's hole saws. They're for cutting small holes in sheet metal, primarily with electricians when they're installing conduit in the box, electrical boxes, etc. Many electrical boxes have pre uh, punch outs already in them, but they may not have enough or in the exact placement that you need them. So this would be a more vintage style cutter just made to make a very shallow cut. And then they have a lip to prevent them from actually punching all the way in. This Greenlee is just a modern version where it has a spring. So when you make the cut, it the spring pushes out the little metal disc so that you don't have to uh, remove the cutter and try to tap it out. And on this Greenlee version, it's actually a quick release, so you can change the sizes. But we can still see the same lip. And that's what these little hole saws are for. They're actually cutout tools for electricians. There's some other specialty hole saw, or at least hole saw style, such as this little guy, which is actually designed as a spot weld cutout bit, where it has a sharp spring-loaded center pointer, if I can find something to show this on. There we go. That's spring-loaded really stout spring surprisingly enough and you just press it into the piece of metal and this little cutter cuts out the spot weld but it is also technically a tiny little hole saw so I did want to show that one and then we have a couple of fly cutters which are really meant for drill presses because they can be extremely difficult to use by hand just due to the nature of them they are a single tool both of these are US general but we have 
what is a standard duty version with quarter inch high speed steel. And we have a more heavier duty version here that has 516 high speed steel. And how these work is they are just a fly cutter. You would take a piece of high speed steel in your grinder and you would grind a shape on that. How you would desire something sharp to make a hole, you would adjust its size and then lock it. And then as it spins around, this little cutter acts like a fly cutter. The reason that they are difficult is because you really have to keep these. If you try to use them by hand, it's, it's just so difficult because you have to keep it real straight. Because obviously, if you tilt to one side, it will just bite in and want to grab and lock up. But they can be absolutely invaluable because they allow you to set uh, any size of circle within their range. And secondly, they allow you to cut custom geometries. And because they use high-speed steel, they can be used on metal as well as wood. And of course, the difference between these two would just be thicker shanks on the heavier-duty version, thicker swing arm. The nicer one actually has markings on it, so it's a little easier to use. It also has a hex to pr prevent it from rotating. Or on the smaller one, it's pretty much relying on the set screw itself. Anyway, those, were, those are what fly cutters are. And you may have seen them. They're not very common because of their difficulty of use and the fact that you have to custom uh, cut a bit. And it can take a while, especially if you want to have nice thin geometry such as this. And I even did a little relief there. But this cutter right here has actually worked pretty well for me by hand, just being real careful and running it real slow. That's the other issue with these is since they have an arm that sticks out, they are really unbalanced and really want to wobble around quite a bit. Hole saws are hole saws. The really cheap ones are kind of like this style. We have like all these little interchangeable bits and like a little nut that's integrated into the arbor. These are real cheap. They'll last, you know, five cuts, five holes or so. The one thing that's uh, several notes about hole saws. One, many times people run these way too fast. Smaller hole saws can be run at 2000 RPM in the softwood, but they really do like to be run more slowly. And as soon as you get up to the larger sizes, they really are to be used in low speed. Hole saws are easy to burn up. Why? Because you have a th thin cutter that doesn't have a lot of heat capacity because there's just not a lot of metal there. And the fact that it has friction both on the inside and the outside, further exacerbated by the fact that hole saws have nowhere to move the wood chips. When you're cutting a hole with a hole saw, everything that it's cutting is just sitting there grinding around the bottom of a hole. And I'll make a demonstration video in the future here, but I've shown where you can peck with the hole saw. And if you have a compressed air, you can peck, blow it out with compressed air and just have the air continuously going while you're doing repetitive pecking motions. And you can drill much faster with the hole saw just because you're getting rid of all those wood chips. So that's the, the things you really need to watch out for, as well as them really liking to bind up. But of course, they're, they're one of the cheapest options for drilling large holes. They can be used on metal because they are essentially a reciprocating saw blade bent into a circle, which means they're bimetal. They have a high speed steel, very hard edge on a softer alloy steel shell. And on this Morse, it has a integrated spindle, and then you can replace the quarter inch center pilot drill. Nice hole saws such as Morse's or Lennox or Milwaukee's or all those brands are still pretty expensive and they are a consumable item. And that's one of the most unfortunate things. So I do get used ones for more abusive situations or when I'm doing uh, metalworking. Because obviously these are easier to drive because you just don't have a whole lot of cutting surface. It's just this ring along here. But for the most part, if I have any other kind of drill bit, an auger or self-feed, anything in wood that I can make the hole with, I'll do that before a hole saw just because I know there's only so many cuts you're going to make with these. And the cheap ones just basically don't last at all, so I do recommend high quality ones. But even an eight-piece set of the new Harbor Freight Hercules is going to set you back like 50 bucks. More than that, if you want professional brands such as, you know, a Lennox or maybe uh, a Bosch or uh, DeWaltz or even Starrett. Starrett's are pretty good hole saws. Even things like these little Milwaukee's here. All are going to generally be recommended. Now, 
some minor differences such as this Bosch and this DeWalt. They have a, a different grind where the teeth are much narrower just to try to give it a little bit more space for wood chips. And I do like that aspect. Also, most hole saws are variable pitch, which means it's actually not as easy to see on that as it may be on... Actually, I even think you can see it on the Lennox very well. It's very obvious on the Morse. We have finer teeth and you have di uh, deeper, coarser teeth. And that's supposed to increase the lifespan while at the same time increasing performance. Other brands such as the Starrett and the Lennox uh, are more traditional. Although the Starrett uses a finer tooth pitch than, say, the Lennox does. One thing that Lennox also does, as we can see here, is they use very thin walls. And I've read a few reviews that the Lennoxes do can get warped, uh, especially if they jam in a hole and you're trying to work it out, that they end up getting an oval shape. And part of that's exacerbated. They had a good idea where they have this stepped cut where you take a screwdriver. When you make hole saws, the piece of wood gets circle gets stuck in the hole saw itself. So you can put a piece of a screwdriver here and pry it out and then move it into each slot and get it to come out more easily than just a traditional linear slot. The problem with that is, is of course, is there's a huge cutout in the side of the hole saw. In addition to Lennox making them extra thin so they're easier to drive, uh, just means that you have like it right here. And on the other side, you have some pretty thin cross sections. So even though the Lennox hole saws are pretty nice, they do use a nice uh, thick steel back plate, uh, they're just not as heavy duty. They cut fast, but uh, those extra thin walls just uh, really, uh, in many situations, uh, can end up hurting you. Although, for the most part, for how long hole saws last, it may really not be as big of an issue as I thought. Of course, hole saws can be made tiny, such as this little tiny 5 8 Linux, or they can be made large, such as this 5-inch Morse here, and they will go up to 6 inches. And what people may use large hole saws for is things like recess lighting and construction. Those are often five and six inch holes. And of course, there's always the high performance ones, such as this carbide tip Morse here. And we can see it has little carbide teeth, kind of like the carbide tooth sawzall blades. And obviously, these type are just champions at metal cutting. And We'll finish at the very end of this video. I'll uh, do a quick hole with this two and nine sixteenths. I'm not going to drill any holes with the hole saws because uh, there's not really much reason to demonstrate them. They are a hole saw. You want to try to be as straight as possible and really using the uh, a slow enough speed. On small ones, you want to go quick, but as soon as you start getting to the larger hole saws, you really got to slow down. So on the tiny little hole saw, some brands, and it seems to be more with older ones, that they include a little hex because they have holders such as this style. And when you're using the hole saw, since it's just threaded, they tend to get themselves really jammed on there. In more modern times, such as this Lennox, they just re rely on you putting a screwdriver in the slot to pry off the uh, hole saw. As far as small, they are two different sizes for driving hole saws, and we'll just basically call it uh, small and large. And what is kind of interesting is that most of these large thread ones have been replaced by quick change collets and pin drive. Bosch has like a proprietary interchangeable collet system for their hole saws, but I don't like it just because it's a whole proprietary system. But as far as standard holders, here's just a nice little version. Uh, poor quality ones just have the pilot drill in it and then you just drive it like this. Slightly nicer ones you'll have uh, a larger hex to drive and then the pilot drill will actually go all the way through the shank. We have an old uh, Sioux here which is a really extra nice extra heavy duty uh, unit. We have a little Lennox here and this is what a more traditional small drive for like driving these tiny ones is that the drill bit actually goes all the way through the little holder and you're actually driving it via the drill bit shank itself instead of the, the shank of the holder. That's why I like styles that are like this, where it's a through hole and you're actually driving via the shank itself instead of relying on the thinner end of the drill bit. And yes, what is also interesting about these is they make little adapters that can screw on so you can actually use your little holder in a pinch 
to drive a larger hole saw. So I always thought that was kind of neat. Moving on, we have a variety. We have Milwaukee, we have Linux, we have Starrett's. Actually, this is a Starrett over here. I'm sorry, this is a Miller's Falls. Uh, we even have a Harbor Freight hiding out somewhere. The Harbor Freights aren't very good, but they're using a very old design where it's threaded, and then that's what pushes the pins down. And I'll show it. those pins drive modern hole saws. And so my issue talking about earlier where they get jammed on, instead they're driven by these pins that you can retract so that the hole saw doesn't get stuck. So older ones are threaded like this. This Harbor Freight one is actually a copy of a much older Miller's Falls, but of course the Miller's Falls version works uh, quite a bit better than the Harbor Freight. This is actually an older Starrett, and it's particularly annoying because you actually have to use a slot head screwdriver to actually thread down the pin. So I have this as a collection, but I don't use it because obviously it's pretty cumbersome, even though it is a very heavy duty hole saw adapter. These have since been replaced by like modern Lennox and Milwaukee's where you just thread on the hole saw with a quick change and it just has a spring loaded thing and you just find the hole. So you just put it all the way tight, start pressing down and then just back off the hole saw. And that ensures that you, it gives you a nice positive drive but without, never, without ever having to worry about it locking up. And so both the Lennox and the Milwaukee are essentially the same design but it's built uh, just a little bit differently and what's interesting is this is a Lennox uh, extended anvil and I thought that was kind of an oddball little adapter here is having an extension quick release hole saw adapter rather than just using uh, some other type of extension but I thought that was kind of neat and pretty unique Anyway, I'm going to do a quick drill with this uh, selfie bit and end this long and uh, overly verbose video. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use this 2 9 16 bit. There is some chips on the what is known as the chip lifter, but even in Milwaukee's instructions, you don't have to sharpen those all the way out in case you hit a nail or something. Which is, of course, another big advantage is selfie bits can hit things like nails and screws and at least be able to break them. We'll use this DeWalt DW131, which they don't make anymore, but I wish they did. It was probably one of the best half-inch drills that DeWalt had their name on. It easily one of the top five. They replaced it with the DW130V, 9 amps at 550, 7 amps at 450, but this has a lot more thermal capacity and about the same torque. It's just, these the newer ones are pretty nice, but... Still not built as well as the old unit, and I never even tested or demonstrated the old unit in my old review of it. Even the fan was uh, metal in these DeWalt's. Anyway, let's go ahead and give this thing a little bit of a shot here. We'll use this 2 and 9 16 bit in a clean area so I don't hit any of those holes. i got to really make sure this uh, block of wood does not want to attempt to uh, spin out from under me. And we'll just do a little hole here. Actually, it's not too little, it's a 2 and 9 sixteenths. Not an issue there. What is an issue is apparently I did not uh, have my center feed screw properly tightened and it got stuck in there. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.